All right. How are we doing? See Another season. Another season. Three more Comes around quick. My 45th. 45th? Goodness me. Um, <laughs> 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 two seconds into a new season. <laughs> new season, a lot of people. They're not getting the memo. <laughs> oh dear. Morning, Eddie. Morning, Mark. Um, we'll start off with deadline day yesterday. How was it for you? Uh, it was. It was good. We trained, and apart from that, not, not you know, no major um, flurry of activity for us. Stuff that we'd planned to do. Did you have a plan to potentially bring someone in? Did you have a nibble? Was there a chance? No, there was no nibbles. No. Um, we were um, content that after Jefferson, our business was done. So, um, yeah, that was us. Obviously, we're looking maybe at a couple of outs um, on the last day just to uh, trim the squad slightly. And one of those outs was Harry Arthur, Bournemouth's second longest serving player, someone who's been on the journey. It must have been a tough decision to allow him to leave because he's done so much for the club, but obviously the way things have been freshened up and changed, it, there obviously wasn't a place for him. Um, in the starting eleven, and perhaps game time was going to be tough for him to come by. How difficult a decision was it to say, "Yep, we'll allow you to go," particularly to another Premier League club? Yeah, it was very difficult. I mean, I think Harry's journey epitomises that of the team and the club. Um, from uh, where Harry, you know, came to the club from uh, non-league and working his way up through the leagues, he's done it in such a an impressive way. Uh, a tremendous desire to achieve, to want to win. Um, He's shown all those qualities as the team has, and um, I can't speak highly enough of him. The difficulty is, is you know, he he desperately wanted to play, um, and to give him that or guarantee him those opportunities was very difficult for me. Um, he didn't play a great deal towards the back end of last season, um, and we just felt that um, we need to keep him um, playing and enjoying his football, and I think that's key for him. So we reluctantly. Uh, agreed to uh, let him go. When you look at the money that you paid for Harry back in 2010, with the money that gets chucked around now, would he go down as one of your best pieces of business as a manager? I think he has to be um, right up there, yeah. I mean, we never envisaged when we paid that money, um, although, it, as I said many times, it seemed like a lot of money to us then, that it would be such good business. Um, we saw a talented player, um, but we didn't quite know that he would have all the the attributes that he had. And I think the biggest one would be that that, that desire to want to win and, and improve. And you could see that every day. So um, I've loved working with him for every minute that we've been together. And it will be very strange to see him playing for someone else. Um, but we wish him well. 72 hours before deadline day, you, you broke the club's transfer record with the signing of Jefferson Lerma, a deal that had been going on for a large chunk of the summer. What can you tell us about what he'll bring to the club? And for you personally, to spend that huge amount of money on a player, Daunting, exciting, all those kind of things. Well, it's, it's not a hugely dissimilar fee to the one we paid for Nathan last summer, so it's it goes with the territory of the Premier League. Um, what will he bring? I think he'll bring a real physicality, um, athleticism to our midfield. He's got a really good engine, box to box player. Um, technically, he's good. Um, he's got good experience. You know, he's played in a very good league, plays for his country. So um, there's certainly a lot to like. He's got the profile that we're we're looking for. He's a good age. We think he'll improve um, with us, so I'm excited to see him play. One of the things that made me smile about his statistics is last season, 19 yellow cards in 32 games. What does that say about him as a player? Well, he's certainly competitive and it is certainly, as I say, bring a physicality to our midfield. Now, we've got to be careful that doesn't overspill into, into red cards, obviously. But um, no, he seems like he's got a great personality, um, a very... Um, relaxed, down-to-earth lad. But on the pitch, obviously, he wants to win and he'll, he'll compete. So um, I think he'll bring that aggressiveness that we uh, we possibly need into our midfield. He's been sort of chucked straight in, really. He's, he's integrated into the squad very quickly. He's, he's been involved with things already. What have you made of the, the sort of early impression you've seen from him? Well, he's had one training session with us, so I wouldn't say, you know, we've seen a great deal of him. Um, he's come to us on the back of of not training after the World Cup and um, that will be a 
an issue for us in the sense we've got to build his fitness up and make sure he's acclimatised to the to the team, to the squad. So there may be a period where people don't see him. Um, but, um, you know, we want to get him up to speed as quickly as possible. And when you look back over your summer, three new faces into the club, obviously Diego, David and Jefferson, how pleased are you with the business? And once again, £50 million pounds being spent by the club, they back to yet again. Yeah, I think uh, really pleased with the three players. I mean, you'd have seen and where everyone would have seen David Brooks um, and Diego Rico last weekend play and I think they would have been pleasantly surprised by what they'd seen. I think they're, they're two really strong players who will have really good seasons for us, all being well. Um, I think we've improved the squad. I think it looks stronger now. Um, leaner squad, I would say. We, we've trimmed um, um, and it's all 20 players, or established uh, fit players that we have at the moment. All 20 players are good enough to play in the Premier League. We have Junior Stanislas and Carl Taylor out. So, when they're both back fit, I think we've possibly got the best squad that I've ever had. Go as far as to say that when, when they play in the back. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think everyone's very strong and real competition for places in all departments. Now, of course, that needs to be shown in the games and the results that we get. But um, as I sit here now, I'm very pleased with what we've done. Ahead of the weekend, um, obviously a huge challenge. Four seasons of Premier League against a, a Neil Warnock side, which you know what, what will come with, with him uh, and his experience. A really tough game for us. I think um, you know we don't underestimate Cardiff, Neil Warnock at all. I think we know that they deservedly got promotion last year in what is such a tough league. Um, they did it in their unique way. Very physical team, very strong team, um, have their obvious strengths. So um, we need to guard against any um, complacency and make sure we attack the game in the right way, which I'm sure our players will. You know, I've never had that. Uh, a problem with that previously but it is going to be a difficult game and we need the home crowd to be actively involved is that, Does it make it tough to prepare for a match like this because they've come up from the championship they've got new faces in and that, that sort of uh, adrenaline that they'll get and the buzz that they'll get from being in the Premier League does that make it slightly more difficult for you to, to go into no not really I think um, we know we know them we've seen them pre-season we saw them last season so we know what they're good at um, and we know the, the things that we're going to have to do well to combat that but we have to believe in ourselves. We have to be uh, very good at what we do. And I think you saw in the Marseille game last week a really good, strong performance from us. So we'll be looking for more of the same, of that type of intensity, that type of play that we, we showed. The last couple. Um, how key will home fans be this season? It's a small stadium, but when they really get behind the team, there is an amazing atmosphere. How important is it going to be that not only have you taken the team to the next level, but the fans take themselves to the next level in supporting the club? Yeah, I think any 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 season, I th I'd say the same. You know, the, the home fans are, are absolutely pivotal to creating the right atmosphere for our players to feel relaxed, happy, confident in their own surroundings. I think historically the supporters have always been huge for us. We've always relied on them to inspire us in, in dark moments, difficult moments. And I think they've always done that. Hopefully, the aim for us this year is to try and get off to a, a better start than we have uh, the last few seasons and to really hit the ground running. Um, to do that, as I said a second ago, I think the, the home supporters will be key to that. Finally from me, when you look back 10 years ago, this was the season that Warmer got hit with the, the 17 point deduction. You'd never managed a game in your life. Can you remember those moments of that season and that time? Because you were obviously from a part of the, the older regime. Yeah, I'm just trying to think back. Um, I can't remember where, what, what I was doing at the start of that season. That's right. Three games of the season, then Jimmy Twiggy came in. Now I remember. Thanks, Mark. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think we. I, I remember going into that season actually, really hoping that we we started the season well under under Kevin and Rob, and thinking that we had a chance to be successful. Obviously, the points deduction and everything that uh, that happened at that time made it difficult for us. I remember we were working under such difficult conditions. Um, and then, of course, a lot happened that season. Ended up being one of the most memorable of my uh, my career, uh, still to this day. But, um, yeah, it doesn't seem like 10 years ago. Yeah, injury for Junior, so he's working his way back to fitness. We anticipate it be about a month away without putting too rigid a time scale on it. Carl Taylor's missing with a, a muscle problem. 
Diego Rico is suspended um, and Jefferson Lerma would not be um, not be considered at this stage. Yeah, I'm sure there's other other players who have been at the World Cup who won't be involved this weekend. I think that the difficulty for us is that uh, that Jefferson just haven't hasn't trained, so to put him or involve him ahead of players that have done a full pre-season, I think would be foolish. So we just have to make sure that when Jefferson steps onto the field, he's absolutely ready to um, to play at his best level. So um, we'll have to do some work with him behind the scenes. Well, of course, but if he's not fit enough to, to do so, then I think it's foolish to do that. So um, that's what pre-season's for. We we would never uh, tell a player to, to miss the whole of pre-season and then step up and play. It's just not going to happen. And not, not at this level. It's, it's just impossible. So we'll take our time with him and make sure he's right. I think it, yeah, I think it has to be. I think it's let, let's get to forty-two points, forty-four points as quickly as we can, and if we can do that early enough, then let's see see where we can go after that. But I think the priority has to be to um, establish ourselves still in the Premier League, um, and as we've found in previous seasons, that's easier said than done. That's going to be a tough challenge first and foremost. But I really do believe in the squad that we have. I do believe in, in everybody connected with the club that we can have a great season. Um, but that's uh, one bridge at a time. Is it is that exciting in terms of why the business then went on to go again? Because we do a lot of off season and then another you know, again talk talk about the pressure that's on us as a club because one of the players that's probably the most important that ever been we ever caught a lot of players in that field, didn't we? So Yeah. They did, and I think that shows the um, the competition of the Premier League. It's so extreme. It's um, everyone's fighting and competing to make sure that they're either not dragged into a, a relegation battle, or they're trying to, um, or they've got different aims to try and win the league. The competition is so high and strong, but not all of those players signed can be successes. It's mathematically impossible. So. You know, we have to believe that the the business we've done, although not high in numbers, is, is good in quality, and that our squad is strong enough. And I think one of our strengths um, will be the continuity that we have. The, everyone knows their role, knows their jobs within the team. We're not integrating too many new players into the team at the same time. They're all challenges and, and difficult things to do. So, hopefully, that strength comes out in the early performances.